Right, let's get <laughs> stuck into the racing. Altitude training. Well. <laughs> the first of the uh, of the seven races on ITV4 on Saturday is the 150 at Santa. It's the Bet Finder by Betbright Flyers handicap. Um, and Paddy Power, five to one. Is it, oh, it's about four to one the field, is it, with you guys? Uh, it is, yeah. Shamson is uh, is four to one favourite. Then you got Justice Lady at nine to two, eleven to two, Caspa. Uh, where are we going? Six to one, Bahamian Sunrise. Thirteen to two, Majestic Hero, and seven to one, Monsieur Joe. And just looking at odds checker, there's actually huge variance between the odds here between the firms, which is uh, which is quite a good thing, I think. Oh, there's some value out there. Is mm. it? So, Kills, is this one of the races that you strongly fancy something? Uh, yeah, having a look at it. I mean, you know, you always know that you need to have a low draw at Sandown. You know, most of the time. And, um, but the horses in drawn one, two, three, and four, they've all been out of form at least recently. I mean, Shamshon in stall four does go well here and, and has won here this season, but uh, uh, I know it didn't, it went very close here this season. But, um, you know, in stall five is Bahamian Sunrise. Now, he's in, he's come in off two career bests, uh, a win and a second, uh, close second last time. He has won both his starts at Sandown, uh, and he's got Sylvester D'Souza in the saddle. And I just think he's the inform horse at the right time. And, you know, like a six to one shot. I think that's very fair. You're a big SDS fan, aren't you, Kills? Yeah, I, I, I love him. I think he's great. He, you know, he, he always seems to have him in the right place. And I like him particularly at shorter distances as well. OK, so Kills has kicked off with Bahamian Sunrise, who is a six to one chance with Paddy Powell. DJ, who do you fancy? That's just going to sound like complete plagiarism here. My notes are... Uh, bah uh, Bahamian Sunrise, two from two at Sandown, will handle a bit of cut in the ground, is one off uh, 68 and 75 last time, only four pound higher now, Sylvester, a big bonus, stall five, I think he'll get to the front because uh, those towards the inner, I think a couple of them will be held up, so I think he will get across to the rail, and he's very hard to pass, especially at Sandown, I love course form on the sprint course at Sandown because uh, I think it really does stand up. I think a lot of horses don't handle it, especially the, the hold-up horses that need to uh, come wide with a late run. And I think Bohemian Sunrise will make all. Terrible echo in here, isn't it? Everything you just <laughs> said, Kills, just came back into my headphones there. Uh, Paddy, who do you like? I, I like Shamshan, the favourite. I think uh, Sh I think just I, think I can see the point with Bohemian Sunrise, but I just think Shamshan might... has been a bit disappointed the last couple of runs, but if, if he does happen to bounce back towards his best, I think uh, very, very solid claims. Well done, lads. Very good stuff to kick off with there. 225, the Bet Bright Solario stakes. Um, some, uh, very occasionally, this will be a relevant race. I think Kingman won it, but apart from that, it doesn't. Well, Ravens Pass won it once. Ravens as well, Pass as well, yeah. yeah. But beyond yeah. that, you're not really generally looking at it as um, a particularly strong signal for the following year's classics. Uh, this year might be uh, no different. Before we get the lads' thoughts, we'll get the latest from Paddy Power. Yeah, so uh, Massar is the favourite at six to four. Uh, Purser three to one. Connect five to one and seven to one. Romanized nine. Vintager. Uh, the Bruin horse is fourteen to one and twenty to one. The rag is Arbalet. Lead on Arbalet. David Jennings. Oh, Bruce, this Massar is a different league to these. I think. Um, I think he completely paid the price. Um, um, it completely played the price for trying to chase Nyaletti, I thought, in the Chesham. And uh, Nyaletti went very, very quick that day and, and was on, you know, it was, it was very hard for, for Massar to, to sustain that gallop. And I thought it probably, that was the reason it didn't get second, probably, I thought. I thought the form behind uh, when it beat uh, Invincible Army um, on its debut at Goodwood is, you know, it stood up to the test of time. Invincible Army, I think, is rated 108 now. So that's re 109 even. That's really strong form. Um, I think everything is in his favour. I think he's the best horse in the race. I'd be very surprised if he's beaten this. Some 2-1 to one elsewhere. So uh, I think that's a cracking price. DJ loves the jolly. Who do you love kills? Uh, I think it's actually far more open than, than DJ makes it. I mean, obviously, Massar is one of the form horses. Roman is the other because he wasn't beaten that far in a group one last time and actually you know he's officially uh, the best horse in the race but you know Massar he's been off he's been off for 70 days and there's loads of group races he could have run in um, but hasn't he just makes you wonder why doesn't it you know what I mean and you know for a short price favour I'd, I, you know, I'd like to know why um, I'm sure our reporters will be on the case obviously so we'll get you've got the, uh, the maiden winner Purser whose trainer John Gosling was responsible for Kings for Kingman and uh, Ravens pass, and that's interesting. But I thought Connect was ridiculously impressive in, in, in a novice here last time. Uh, made the running on easy-ish ground. Uh, and I, I think he's probably pretty decent. And I wouldn't rule out Vintager either. He won very easily uh, uh, last time as well, first time up. Even though he was 33 to 1 then, he actually won with plenty in hand. So I think this is I think this is a very open race. But I'd go for Connect because he, he's, he's had both runs at Sandown and he, he obviously handles the track very well. Who would you go for, Paddy? 
Uh, I'm going to go with Purser because I think uh, Gosden probably had plenty of options of, of potential runners in this race. And this is the one he's gone with. It was eye catching, hands and heels, getting up by a neck or a, a head or something uh, in, a, in the maiden win. So I think Massar, I agree, is, is probably the, the one with the form in the book. I haven't seen since Ascot. So I think Purser might be the one that's very progressive. Loads of unexposed. So I agree with Keels on that. But I think Purser's the one I like. Right, the three o'clock's the Betbright Casino Atalanta Stakes, another Group Three and another open affair, Paddy. Yes, it is another uh, wide open affair. We got Al Jazzy is uh, is is actually not favourite, but he's first in the list there. <laughs> Natra's favourite at 130. Al Jazzy's four to one. Uh, Intimations nine to two, and then uh, she's the pressure of these getting these in the right uh, order. How long have you been doing this? I know, I know, and I used to be a board marker as well. On her toes, 13 to two, eight to one each of uh, Tis But a Dream and Greta G and uh, tens of bigger the rest. Seriously, Paddy, which year do you reckon you did your first recital of Paddy Power's prices to a live microphone oh, wow. I'd say um, how long have you been on the firm for feels like forever yeah it is it's now 96 I started officially now although I'd done it I'd worked summers as well before that in college and that but 96 so I'd say the first time I was let near a radio station or anything like that would have been probably 97 98 <sighs> I'd imagine, 20 yeah. years. You're getting the hang of it. Getting the hang of it. You yeah. can go first with the selection here, Pad. <laughs> Great. Okay. Well, I, I like actually really like uh, Natra here. I just think that um, I look well, well. First of all, I think that the, the, um, the Al Jazi, who's top of the list, is is one that's interesting, obviously, because obviously Botti's flying at the moment. But I just think Natra has won lightly raced enough since running the in the the Guineas and the French Guineas last year. I think the trip is ideal for her, and I just think it could be a good day for Gosling. I think she's going to be the one. What do you reckon, Kills? Yeah, well, I just wonder what price you reckon uh, the guys reckon Rain Goddess would be if she was in this race, because Intimation would have beaten Rain Goddess last week if she'd got a run. And uh, she's 9-2, to two. I think she'd be favour. I mean, on official figures, she's probably got a bit to find, but I think she's she's very much, she's improving. Um, she wants a little bit of cut in the ground, so as long as it as long as there's plenty of juice, uh, she'll be fine if, if she backs up the, the recent run, because that was only six days ago. Um, Al Jazi is another one who hasn't run for 70-odd days. Now, that was that's that second to Kamara at Royal Ascot is the standout piece of form, but as a run for ages, she was a 40 to one shot then. It's a huge outlier on a form, and it came on very fast ground at Ascot. Um, I just think uh, Intimation is definitely the one to beat, and I think she'll go off Fav. What's your weather app saying, Kills? There might be a bit of rain between now well, it's and gonna be dry. It's gonna, it's, gonna, it's gonna be dry. Um, I'm surprised they didn't get any. My one's showing a few raindrops late morning uh, tomorrow. Yeah, is it? Oh, good. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm surprised they didn't get you know anything other than a couple of small showers yesterday because I got absolutely drenched in like a cloud burst in Epsom. Did you? Yeah. Out unbelievable. Of the dog. Unbelievable. Yeah, yeah, it was, yeah. yeah. Mm, Christ. Now, Kills, I've just spotted that Racing Post Ground TV have got some Kit Kats, okay? <laughs> oh, fantastic. Two finger Kit Kats. So, <laughs> so normally, DJ, we're trying to sort of keep you on the on the well, uh, leash yeah, a little bit, but you can, you can crack <laughs> on here and give us chat to him first. The question is, can me and Kills eat a Kit Kat by the time you've finished dissecting the three? Oh, that, no, I, I just I don't say I don't fancy anything. I was, right? I, you just ruined my joke. I was just about to say I don't fancy anything. Right, go on then, crack on. Uh, as Paul said, uh, uh, Intimation was so unlucky. I, I'm, I'm the founding member of Colin Keane's fan club, but he had an absolute horror show on Intimation last week. Uh, went for three different gaps and couldn't get them. Uh, so she was the moral winner of the race, flew home, beaten half a length. And uh, if it does rain, she, she won. On, her best performance came in the list at race at Nace last autumn when she beat Rosa Pierre by four lengths. That was on really deep ground. It was heavy ground. So if it does rain, uh, I'm sure Paul will be doing a rain dance because uh, it, it has a cracking chance if it does rain. The one at a huge price, I think, that's overpriced is Opal Tiara. Now, we, you know what you get from Opal Tiara. She's exposed, um, but I do think she's overpriced. If you look at her last couple of runs, they've been in group ones no, and group twos. <laughs> Well, I keep going. Yeah, yeah. Go I'm only just finished the first <laughs> finger. Go okay, on. not too bad. Uh, so, yeah, I, I, I just think Opal Tiara, she's rated 104, which puts her bang in the mix here. She was rated 111 um, back in May when she was second the Craig's Pipes at the Curragh. That's a decent enough run. And then, you know, she's been asked some really, really tough tests since, including in the Celebration Mile um, last week when she was last behind Lightning Spear. But uh, I thought she ran better. Like, uh, I thought John Egan accepted the situation very early there. She's beaten just over eight lengths. Look, she's 25 to 1, but I do think she'll run well, Opal Tiara. How'd I do? Um, about one horse short. But anyway, that's <sighs> right. We can live with that. So close. 3.35, <laughs> it's the Bet Bright Recall Handicap. Again, really competitive stuff, this. Marlin 2 is the trip. Paddy Power, what's the latest betting? The latest is across Dubai is four to one favourite. You got Monarchs Glen at six to one. Then you got eight to one each of five. Eugenio Pacify, Thundering Blue, Silver Ghost, and Oasis Fantasy, and ten to one and bigger the rest. Kills who wins this and why? 
Uh, yeah, hopefully pacify. I just think he's coming back to form and has dropped down to a nice handicap mark now. He's been disappointed a couple of times um, this season, but I don't think he wants to ground really fast. Really good second to uh, anything today last time at Newmarket. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's a while since he won, but I think he's, uh, I think he's very, very well treated at his best now. And a great trainer. Oh, obviously, yeah, yeah Rafe. Absolutely. Yeah. Right, OK, uh, DJ, who do you think is going to win the 335 at Sandown? Uh, trainers very rarely listen to me, uh, Bruce, but... Uh, Does after, anyone? Uh, no, not really, no. Um, after, the co <laughs> after the cop tat at Goodwards, um, I said to myself, uh, probably out loud, probably cursing uh, Monarch Slain, I said, that f Whoa, 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 no, whoa, no, whoa, no, whoa. you can't say that, you can't Sorry. say that. <laughs> Take that out, Jack. Sorry. Yeah. That booking horse. <laughs> that uh, that hoor of a horse uh, needs to have his uh, so that is much his, better, his, is it? <laughs> his prize jewels taken off because uh, it was uh, it just looked as if a horse that badly needed to be gelded. Uh, Traded very short that day, went miles clear on the Robert Hart. Uh, I think it went two point six in running, and uh, just last furlong or two, uh, just absolutely fell into a hole. But I do think. Monarchs Glen in form now that he's been gelded is really well handicapped off a mark of 100 uh, this was like my idea of a kind of a, a an outside fancy for the derby back in the spring um, didn't was, was odds on for, for the for the trial at Sandown um, and uh, again was far too keen in that be bet 365 classic trial um, I just think there's a lot more to come from Monarchs Glen now that he's been gelded and a mark of 100 he's drawn it and saw 11 which is not ideal but I think back in trip gelded in a handicap I think all uh, all uh, everything is pointing towards a big run for Manor Glen. Paddy, what do you reckon? Okay, well, I think I just thought across Dubai is uh, the most interesting one. Very lightly raced, um, probably one's better ground he's had. It was obviously entered the Dante in the Derby before, and, and clearly hasn't shown on the track what they think he might be capable of ha at home. And I think there's a big upside there. Does he's probably going to be better than the? I think he's rated 95. It's probably a better horse than that. I think. And, and the other one I was looking at is Thunder Blue because I think his form has worked out well, and he was valued for more than a length win the last time. He kind of ran all over the track there in the finish. But uh, I think across Dubai I'll go for.